hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about maximizing a small space and making it feel a lot bigger than it really is, but also different things that you can do to make a rental property or a rental space that you're living in feel like your own. When Jared and I got married back in 2018, we took over a lease for some friends in a little one bedroom apartment that's kind of like a condo. I'll show you guys, but you walk right up to our front door from the street, which is really nice, so there's no elevator or hallways, but obviously it's a pretty small space. It's definitely less than a thousand square feet, and although it's just the two of us and our tiny dog, Max, it can definitely feel really cramped if you're not thinking about different ways that you can maximize the space in a way that's functional, but also beautiful. And so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing really quickly some of my top tips for these things of maximizing space, but also making a rental feel really homey. And I'm also gonna give you guys a little bit of a tour of our first apartment together. Um, we're right now actually looking at houses and potentially buying something of our own, which we're super excited for. But I figured that it would be kind of a cool thing to take this little video of our first home together and even just have that documented. Because I don't know about you guys, but I always feel like I wish I could go back and see like video footage of the first place that I lived, just to like have that nostalgic um, memory of where we used to call home. And so I'm excited that this video can help you guys out, but also be like a little memory for us. And without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I would recommend to make a rental feel like your own is to paint it if you're allowed. Paint makes a massive difference in a space, especially if you're moving into a space where the people that were there before maybe chose a color that you wouldn't have chosen yourself, like a bold red or a deep blue or different things like that. It's obviously so nice when you can come into a rental space and the color that they have chosen is already neutral, but it's even better when you can ask them whether or not they're okay with you painting. And a lot of the times, if you paint your rental a neutral color, they're totally okay with that. When we first moved in here, our rental company said that we couldn't paint at all. But then I actually had a follow-up co uh, conversation with the company and said, hey, if we paint this white, like, are we allowed to do that? And they were like, oh yeah, that's totally fine. Like, we just don't want people to paint the walls like pink or green or anything like that. So most rental companies will honestly see it as adding value, like for free on their behalf, if you are willing to paint for them. I would say don't invest a ton into the paint that you choose because obviously you're not gonna make any money back off of that. So if there's a color that you want and you can find it in an affordable way, for example, for us, that was white. Um, we were able to find a shade of white and paint our whole apartment except for the back bedroom for less than $100. And for us, that was totally worth it, knowing that we were gonna be here for a couple years for us to actually like the space and the color of paint on our walls. So that's my first tip, is to add your own paint to it, see if you're allowed to do that. If not, this next tip will probably help. The second tip is to hang your own art or photos. Obviously, this is such a great way to make a space feel like your own, especially when you're moving in somewhere and the walls may have holes in them or things from a past tenant that just are not like your vibe or what you wanna have to look at all the time. Find those spots where artwork or photos could add the most value and really look for opportunities to hang those up to make a space feel like your own. For us, that was our wedding photos when we moved in here. The walls were bare for a while, but honestly, it did not feel like home in here until those photos were hung up. Once you can see yourself and some of the things that you love all over the walls of the place that you're staying, it really feels a lot more like home, especially in a rental. Some places are not okay with you hanging things with nails in the wall, and I totally get that. That's possible in some of these spaces. And so one of the things that I would recommend if that is the case for you, is to opt for command strips instead. The amount of command strips that you need and the um, like heavy dutiness of those command strips will depend on how heavy the object that you're hanging is. However, I would beg to argue that most everything can be hung by command strips and most walls will work with them. Um, when I moved to my dorm and university, obviously I couldn't hang anything, the walls were concrete, but I did use command strips to hang some pretty heavy duty frames to those walls and immediately the space felt more like my own. So get creative, look for ways that you can hang stuff on the walls. They don't always have to use nails or actually permanently damage the walls. There are ways that you can do it in a damage-free way. The last tip that I have for you guys is to change out your light fixtures. So 
This one can be a little bit more pricey to, to do, but it doesn't have to be super expensive. You can find some awesome light fixtures on Amazon or Home Depot. Even look for things like at thrift stores or on Facebook Marketplace, um, if that's possible where you are. But light fixtures make a massive difference to change the way that a room feels. If you are living in a space where they have the characteristic boob light on the ceiling, honestly, it's one of those things that is just like, such an easy fix to transform a space and make it feel so much more like your own, really elevate it, have it match the rest of the furniture that you bring in. So I would definitely recommend doing that. If you have a friend that can come and help you install those light fixtures, it is a game changer. Luckily for me, Jared knows how to do that, but we do have friends we could call if it was more complicated. So call someone that you know, look on Facebook, see if maybe a friend would do it for um, a little bit of cash on the side. It makes such a huge difference in having a space that feels like your own. The next thing I'm gonna go through are ways to make a small space feel bigger. One of the ways that you can do this is by using multi-purpose furniture. So obviously if you're in a small space, you're not gonna have the luxury of having multiple unique pieces that all serve a unique purpose all the time in every single room. You're gonna have certain rooms where you need that thing to do multiple things for you, whether that is your nightstand that also doubles as storage. For us, a great example of this is our TV console. When we walk into our apartment, it's also the place where we drop our things like our keys and our phones when we walk into the door. And so behind the TV, I actually have a little system and a container that we can use to do that so that we can catch all of those things while we come in without having to have another table to actually serve the purpose of that function, for example. So having multi-purpose furniture is a great way to be able to do this. Obviously storage is a huge one for this. So if you can find furniture that you love, that looks beautiful and matches your style, but can also store a lot of your stuff, that's gonna be a game changer for you. The next tip that I have to make a small space feel bigger is to lean into glass. So this is something that my mom taught me when I was really younger, is that having glass in a room, including glass furniture and glass mirrors, is really a game changer to make a room feel bigger. One of the most common ways that this is done is by adding a mirror to a wall and having that mirror kind of reflect the rest of the room and make it seem like that space is bigger. So obviously this is all perception, but Finding really intentional places to put mirrors in your house is one of the huge ways that you can make a space feel bigger. So small cramped hallways, um, maybe in a bedroom space if you notice that it's a really small space, that'd be a great place to add a mirror, maybe a centered above the bed or off over your dresser in a living room above the couch. I love adding a mirror to make a room feel a little bit bigger. Um, mirrors are really a great way to maximize the space in a room, but so is pieces of glass furniture. So by glass furniture, basically I mean any type of furniture that you can see through that doesn't feel like it's completely filling the space. It's gonna make your space feel a lot bigger, a lot more open and a lot more airy than if it was that solid piece of furniture. The next point that I have here is to make sure everything has a place. A place to go at the end of the day, a place to go at the start of the day. If you notice that there's a lot of things in your house that are constantly needing to be tidied. Having a small space means that things are going to look messier a lot faster. You can really see all of the different places very easily that things are starting to collect or look like they're out of sorts. And so having a place for everything means that when, art, when things are getting really messy like that, you can just quickly go around, pick things up, know where they're supposed to go, do that at the start of your day, do that at the end of your day, and make sure that your house stays super, super clean and that you're not living in chaos all the time. The final point that I have when it comes to maximizing your space is to use hidden storage. Obviously this one is pretty similar to using multi-purpose furniture, but I think oftentimes when you're in a small space and you don't have a lot of storage, people automatically think that they need furniture to fix that problem. For example, if your closet is really small, you may have considered adding in a separate Pax wardrobe from Ikea and having that in your bedroom, but that's a huge piece of furniture that is now taking away space in another room in your house. And so what I would recommend is just looking for creative ways, and you can find a ton of this stuff on Pinterest, about how to maximize the space that you do have in your house and finding ways to make that space work as storage for you. A perfect example of this for us is some of our summer and winter clothes that we're not always using for the entire year. Basically what we'll do is we'll go through season by season and we'll take those clothes out of our closet 
fold them up really nicely and put them in storage containers under the bed so that we can access them next year and they're in great condition, they're totally safe under there, but we're leveraging some of this space under our bed that we are paying for, we're renting this space, and otherwise it's not being used and, and utilized for us. And so this is just an example of some of the ways that you can use storage to create more space and actually feel like you're not living in a really crowded or cramped um, house all of the time because you are finding ways to make the space that is there work well for you. So now that I've shared some of those overall tips, I'm gonna take you guys on a mini tour of our apartment, walk you step by step through some of the thinking that we went through when it came to the decisions that we made for furniture, some of the fun things and choices that we um, made just because, but I hope that this is helpful for you guys and that you enjoy this little tour. So this is the outside of our building. As you can see, we have a little balcony space and then we walk right into our front door. So inside our apartment, we have a couple of living spaces. Um, we have our living room that goes straight into our dining room, our kitchen space, and then our bedroom. When you first walk in, we have this cute little mat to take off shoes and things like that. But then I also picked up this little container from um, Simon's in Toronto to just drop off things like keys, phone. This is the dog's vest after we're finished, uh, finished walking him that we can just toss in there and have it stored in a way that looks really nice. Over here, we chose to add two chairs just to make a lot more seating space when we have people over. Um, we're using this little plant in the corner to add a little bit more color to the room because we obviously did paint the walls white in here when we moved in. They were a darker gray that we still have in the bedroom, so I'll show you guys that in a second, but this is the color that we chose to paint with, and I will add the link and the name for that paint in the description box. As I talked about, we also have this glass table here. This is just Ikea. It's a super affordable table, but it's really great because it does allow us to be able to feel like there's a lot more space in this room, especially when it is like a really tiny space to have your whole living room and your kitchen table in the same room. And so this was a great way for us to be able to just make this feel a little bit more open and airy than if we used a full wooden table. One of the tips that I shared in the video is to just add a mirror to make the space a lot feel a lot bigger, especially when you first walk in. That's one of the first things that you see. So the room doesn't feel like it ends there. It kind of feels like it has this perception of it continuing. Up here, you can see some of the light fixtures that we changed out. So you can see the, the mark on the wall or on the ceiling up here. We did have those like classic boob lights when we moved in, but we switched out the light in here to kind of match the style that we were going with on the mirror, the table, and the light over here by getting this light, which is actually from Home Depot. I believe it was less than $100, and I'll try and find a similar light that I can link in the description box down below. In the kitchen, we did the same kind of thing where we installed a schoolhouse light that is from Wayfair. Love that it doesn't hang so low that it makes it um, feel like the kitchen is still big enough for you to be able to walk around in. But that was another fun way for us to be able to kind of change out that kitchen and make it feel a little bit more like. Uh, one of the things that Jared and I decided that we did want to have in our space, even though it was one of those things that was like, ah, we know it's gonna take up a lot of room, was adding this bookshelf from Ikea. Um, we just had so many books that they were honestly like falling out all over the place, under the bed, in the closet, and we needed to get them organized. So this really thin Ikea bookshelf was a great way to just add in the books that we wanted to be able to access really easily and sit on the couch and just read over here. And we did also get this little pull from Ikea just to customize it and make it match our space a little bit more. Down here is more hidden storage space. So in this basket is actually Max's bed and some of his toys that I don't want to have just lying around in the living room. This basket is from Chapters and this blanket was a wedding gift. I would totally let you know if I knew where it was from, but it probably home sense or something like that. Um, and this is just a really nice way to double your basket as like a blanket basket, but also have things stored underneath. If you fold the blanket on top, nobody's gonna know that there's like a ton of stuff underneath of it. And then Max's bed kind of hides some of the things that are underneath if this blanket does come off. So this is one of the great ways that we're able to keep extra blankets in case people come over or we get cold while still having things stored down here. 
So moving over to our kitchen table, as I said, one of the things that was really important to Jared and I was having a kitchen table that we could have people around, but obviously with this being our entire living room as well, that was a little bit tricky for us to accomplish. So that's why we picked up this table from Ikea, which is actually part of their Virgil Abloh off-white collection. Um, so it's really thin, it's pretty skinny, and it allows us to push it right up next to the wall. Um, we picked up these struck tube chairs, not because they were like super functional and like small enough for us to be able to fit in the space, but because we just really loved them and think that these wishbone chairs are so beautiful. And it's important that you're also choosing some things for your space that you just love to look at. So I think that's an important thing that you can do. And one of the ways that we were able to make this work for us is by actually using this hidden bench under here from Ikea. So basically this bench is like 120 bucks and we just slide it under the table so that when we have guests over, we can transform this space and have like a full dining room area that we can sit at least four people around. I'll show you guys how it works. And voila, you can now fit four people around this table comfortably. You still have the rest of the space over here. So when we're done eating, we just slide this back and it allows us to be able to still host people without sacrificing on our living room area. So moving into the kitchen, one of the things that we did obviously other than paint and change the light fixtures in here was to change the knobs on the cabinets. So when we first moved in here, these were actually a silver kind of builder grade look. But one of the things that we did in the living room was really leverage and kind of capitalize on the, the black appliances that came with the condo. It wouldn't have been my choice, but because it is here, I just decided to lean into it rather than pretend like it wasn't the case and get the light fixture that matched, the table that matched, the um, lamp that matched, and the mirror. And then these really complement that look as well. So that was one of the things that we did and we just got those off of Amazon. I think it was like 30 or $40 for the package. We had extra and we were able to change out every single pull in the kitchen. So honestly, that's one of my favorite things about our kitchen and I'm really glad that we did do that. I love that this kitchen did come with the kind of fake marble countertop as well as the subway backsplash. Um, but when we were looking at some other places, obviously not all of the places had that. So one of the things that I was looking at doing was finding kind of like a laminate option off of Amazon that I could cover the countertops with if we didn't get this option. And you can also get little sticker backsplash options on Amazon, at Home Depot. Really most places do offer those now. So if that's a look that you really want to go for, in your rental and your rental really needs an upgrade in the kitchen but you can't afford and wouldn't want to do it yourself obviously that's kind of a cool little hack that you can use to kind of mimic that look one of the things that you'll see in the kitchen as well is this basket hack again we store so many odds and ends in this kitchen basket this is basically like the urgent things that we need to access like mail or coupons that we want to use really quickly. A lot of stuff we will store in the um, paper basket in that front closet, but if we need to access it really quickly and soon, it goes into this basket, which is just covered with a little white cloth from Target. We don't have a lot of storage space for pantry items in here, and honestly, it is such a mess inside this cabinet, so I won't do a full deep dive, but we did try and isolate some of the spices just by adding this little um, acrylic container and using command strips to, getting it to, to get it to stick to the inside. Um, all of that is from the dollar store. We got the command strips there, we got the little acrylic container there, and it's been a super handy way for us to be able to just quickly and easily grab spices while we're cooking. So coming down the hallway here, you can see some of our wedding photos hung in indigo frames. Over here is just our laundry storage space. So I stack all of our laundry stuff on the top and use the same Ikea baskets to just make that um, work for us and keep all of that stuff in there. And over in the bathroom, so this was a space that was a little bit trickier for us because when we moved in here, there was no storage in here other than what's here. Really, really challenging for us to find a way to make this work. So we did get this um, kind of 
shelf fixture type situation from Ikea that we have installed and it's actually screwed to the wall here so it doesn't fall over, it's super stable. But that's just a nice way for us to be able to um, utilize this space. And one of the ways that I do make it really functional is by adding towels to the very top rack or to the top um, kind of middle rack. So that, that way when they're washed and they're folded, we can get um, some more towels stored into this bathroom as well. So coming down here into our storage bay, this is like the only closet storage that we have for bathroom stuff in our whole house. So even with the organization that we've put in here now, it's not like ideal in terms of how we can organize this. Um, but the system that's worked for us to make the most of this is just having like his and hers baskets and this little acrylic container from the container store in Waterloo that I use for extras of things. So basically extra razors, extra things of shaving cream, deodorant, things like that I'll keep in there. Some of the taller bottles will stack on the top of that or at the very back of the um, cupboard here. But basically this is my basket and this is Jared's basket and we just keep them separate so that we each kind of have a space that we can go to grab things. Um, and then it kind of forces us to be a little bit more minimalistic in terms of what um, we keep in these baskets and especially what I keep in my makeup bag because we just do not have the space for um, tons of makeup stuff and this uh, system has worked really well for us while we've been in this apartment. So coming into our final room here, this is our bedroom. And honestly, it's a really good size bedroom for a one bedroom apartment. I'll try and stand back here so you can get a better sense of the space in the room. There's like this huge section here that is just a little bit open. Um, we think that the upstairs units that are two bedrooms are basically just like a wall in between here. So the rooms are both gonna be really small. Lumex <laughs> sleeping under the bed. Um, but this is our bedroom. This bed frame is from Wayfair. Our side tables are just Ikea and the lamps are from Target. Don't store a bunch of stuff on this side of our bedroom. So this is perfect for things like cords, scrunchies, and essential oils because I do diffuse those before bed um, but there are a few things that we would store under the bed as well in containers and um, over here we have another one of those hacks that just makes the face the space feel a lot bigger so this is an acrylic chair from struck tube and um, that was actually a gift from my mom when I first moved out and I've had it ever since so we just use it over here this is like our classic chair that gets stuff thrown onto it all the time whenever we don't want to like put clothes away. Honestly, every single room or bedroom needs to have one of those. And um, over here, we have a fiddle leaf fig that needs to be potted still. <laughs> Our little puppy Max, say hi buddy. Um, I have not gotten to that yet, but it really does love being in front of this big window over here. And then on this side of the room is our um, Hemnes dresser from Ikea. So this is where we store a bunch of our clothes that don't fit into this closet over here. Um, and we've got two mirrors up here to make the room feel bigger as well. These are actually my wedding flowers on this table. I kept those and dried them. I think it's such a fun thing for any brides to do if you have a wedding coming up or you know a bride that's kind of gonna go away for her honeymoon. If you can um, save this for her and you're in the bridal party or something like that, honestly do it because it's such a fun thing to be able to keep. This is Jared's bonsai, which we are currently killing. I wish that I knew how to do better with it. Um, another mirror over here. This is our full body mirror that we used to get ready and to test different outfits and things like that. And this is another kind of storage mechanism over here. I keep extra books and just like makeup and hair stuff in here because I'll oftentimes get ready in front of this mirror. And <laughs> hi buddy, this is an easy way for us to be able to hide some of that stuff when it's not in use. And the final thing that I'll show you guys in our bedroom is this light fixture that I actually got from Wayfair as well. Um, just a super cute kind of gold accent that I got to match the gold um, side lamps here that we got from Target. This light was also less than $100 from Wayfair, super quick install, and it just adds like another just sense of elegance to the room and makes it feel a little bit fancier than the boob light that was there before.
I hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope that you learned a couple of cool tips about either maximizing the space that you have in a rental property or about making it really feel like your own. If there's anything that I miss that you really swear by in your space, I'd love for you to drop that in the comments or you can head over and send me a message on Instagram at Beth Grace Moore. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say there. Before you go, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing more videos. I'd love to get to know you, who you are, and hear about what type of videos you want to see next on my channel. See you guys next time. Are you a little photo bobber? Hey buddy.